In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a sturdy wood crate that will house a big painting that needs to be shipped from point A, which is Michigan in my case, to point B via a truck freight company. I'm going to be using one by pine boards for the ends and the top and the bottom, and then quarter inch plywood for the sides. First I'll put in a sheet of rigid foam insulation, one inch thick, then the painting, and then another sheet of the rigid foam. And then I'll put the quarter inch plywood, or a lot of times at lumber yards it's called underlayment plywood. There are really three issues that I'm concerned about with building the crate. The first is if the crate falls over, either in the truck or at the terminal. That's why the painting is sandwiched between two layers of the foam insulation. The second issue that I'm worried about is a forklift driver running one of the forks through the crate into the canvas. So I have to design the crate to make it really easy to be picked up by the forklift. And to do that, I'm going to build two little feet on the bottom of the crate. One's going to go here, and then one over here. This way, it's really easy for a forklift driver to come along and pick up the crate and take it wherever they have to take it. The other issue that I'm worried about is once my painting gets loaded on the truck, we'll call that my little baby, that some other really big heavy metal thing gets loaded next to it and that the driver driving down the road reaches for a donut or his phone rings and the truck swerves and the big heavy metal thing comes and squashes the painting. So what I can do to really protect the painting is take some more pine boards, one inch thick, and build this structure on the outside of the crate just to protect it from being crushed. Once I figured out the interior dimension that I need, I cut the pine boards to length. It's a really cold day in the studio. Then I determined the width of the painting and the insulation boards together, and I ripped down the pine boards to the, to the width that I need. Here I'm marking the ends of the tops and the bottoms. This is where the sides are going to meet and I need to pre-drill the screw holes to hold the case together. And that's what I'm doing here. Here I'm beginning to make the feet that are going to be attached to the bottom pine board. I'm cutting a 45 degree angle on both sides of the board and then cutting it the same width as the bottom board. And then I'm gluing it to the bottom board with lots of glue, kind of clamping it in place here. And then I'm going to attach it from the inside with four drywall screws. And then after that, I'm going to take a plane or you could take a rasp and I'm just going to knock off those sharp edges because I want the crate to be able to slide along the floor without catching anything. Here I am pre-drilling and then I'm going ahead and screwing the cabinet together or the crate together with uh, about two inch drywall screws. And then I'm going to double check my measurement. I want to make sure I have enough room. And then I cut the plywood outside panels. I put the two sheets of plywood together and I cut them both at the same time. Next I'm going to attach the first plywood panel using number eight three quarter inch lath screws. They have kind of a nice wide head to them and they really attach the plywood well to the frame. And then you notice here 
crate is a little bit bigger than the plywood, which is 48 inches wide. So I'm piecing in some little spacer pieces. And then this is, I'm working on the bottom of the crate. This is that first pine board that's going to be on the outside of the crate, and I'm going ahead screwing that into position. Here I'm using about inch and five eighth drywall screws, number eights, I believe, or maybe they might have been number sixes. Then I'm turning the crate around, and now you get to see that little gap of the spacer that I needed to fill in. And then I'm taking some more of those lath screws and I'm screwing both pieces of those plywood to the, to the pine board on the outside. These are three inch or three quarter inch screws so they don't stick through the other side. And here's a shot of, of those boards properly attached. Then I'm going ahead and I'm attaching on the outside edges the two extra pieces of uh, pine boards that will protect the crate. There'll be three on each side, one in the bottom, one in the middle, and one toward the top. And I'm just attaching it on the outside edges with drywall screws. And now I'm going to attach the plywood to the pine board using the lath screws. That way the pine board and the outside plywood panel are kind of like one solid connected unit. I use about six of those lath screws for every pine board. So here's the two paintings. They're wrapped in plastic. I've already put in one foam uh, insulation sheet, one inch foam insulation. I've got some spacers to maintain kind of an edge all around the painting. And here's another sheet of that one inch styrofoam or rigid foam insulation. Then I have the final side of the painting. I have the pine boards cut and clamped into place and I have to lift it up and attach the pine boards with the lath screws. And here I'm attaching those pine boards to the plywood. So when the customer unscrews the whole side that will all come off as one one unit and here goes the piece attached to the crate you can see I've got all three of the uh, pine pieces are attached and here I'm going ahead and attaching the plywood to the crate with the lath, lath screws. Kind of knocking off the sharp edges. Anything that makes the crate slide better along the floor, I think, is just makes it easier for the shipper. And I'm marking which way the crate should ride. This crate needs to ride standing up, so I put a black arrow on each side of the crate. That lets the handlers know that it shouldn't lay flat, it should stand straight up. And then the last thing I do is I weigh it on my bathroom scale. 